Hi, welcome to week three of science. We are continuing with animal life cycles. We are looking at part two, which is invertebrate animals. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you guys so much for doing your Kahoot quizzes. I was really impressed with all of the results. Uh, most of you did a lot better than any of the teachers did. So we spent the weekend a little bit sad um, and trying to do the quiz as many times as we could so we could have a better score. Uh, we will let you know the results, which class maybe did the best on it, um, but so far from what I can tell, everyone paid really good attention last week in the videos, so hopefully you will pay equally good attention during the videos this week. Uh, just a note, you do not actually have to write notes this week again, uh, unless you would like to, and there is nothing to submit all week. At the end of the week, I'm going to be introducing an activity for you that you will be doing next week. Okay, so for this week, you can just relax and enjoy the videos, learn a little bit about invertebrate life cycles. So let's get started. We talked about a quick review last week, so we're just going to really breeze through it right now. So remember that animals are living things because they grow, have cells, have babies, breathe or need air, move and need food. Animals all need water, air, food, and shelter, and they can be classified into two groups. Vertebrates, which are animals with a backbone, and invertebrates, which are animals without a backbone. And then from there, as we talked about last week, they can be separated into different groups. So the vertebrate has mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish, so it is separated into five groups, and invertebrates is periphera, cnidaria, echinoderms, mollusks, annelids, and arthropods, which is six groups. So, what are in invertebrates? So, they are animals without a backbone. Now, an interesting fact is that over 96% of all the animal species on Earth are actually invertebrates. But the ones that we think of most, like, the most common ones that we think of when we think of animals are actually vertebrates, even though there's a lot less of them. So 96%, so most of the animals that live on Earth are invertebrates. Now we know that there are six groups. So invertebrates are creatures like periphera, which are sponges, cnidaria, jellyfish, echinoderms, starfish, mollusks, which are octopus, snails, and clams, annelids, which are worms, and arthropods, which are insects, spiders, and lobsters. Now this week we're going to be focusing mostly on the arthropod group, uh, just because that is a very common group. There's a lot of information on it, um, and it's probably the most important one of the groups for you to know. So you've already learned about mammals and reptiles and birds and fish and amphibians. So you're also going to add arthropods to your list of creatures that you know. So if you want a little bit more information about invertebrates, there are two videos that I found. There's a sh somewhat short Dr. Bernox video, I believe it's less than five minutes, and it tells you a little bit about invertebrates. And then there's a slightly longer one, and it actually goes into a little bit more detail about the different types of invertebrates. So if you want to watch those today, feel free. Um, remember, you don't have to, but they're actually very interesting, and I enjoyed watching them, so you might as well. So invertebrate life cycles are basically similar to vertebrate life cycles. So just like the invertebrate animals we studied last week, invertebrates have a life cycle as well. Their cycle also has four steps, and it's the same four steps really as vertebrates, which is birth, growing up, adulthood, and then it ends, their life ends when they die. Uh, but again, we are going to look at the happier parts of their life. We are looking at the stages before the final stage of their life was when they die. So most invertebrates have four stages within their life cycle, which is between birth to adulthood. But there are some that don't, okay? And we're probably not going to be talking about those since we're going to focus on the ones that most of them have this week. So, the four stages that most invertebrates have are the egg stage, the larva stage, the pupa stage, and the adult stage. So, we're going to look a little bit closer at each stage today before we actually start looking at the invertebrate life cycles. 
So stage one is the egg stage. So invertebrates lay eggs just like reptiles and fish and birds and amphibians. And they can be hard shelled if the animal is an insect or an arachnid, which is a fancy word for spider. Um, so basically they are hard if they lay eggs on land, but they are more jelly-like if the animal is a jellyfish or lives in the ocean. So hard if they live on land and more jelly if they live in water. So here are three different examples of really tiny little insect eggs. So here in the first picture, you can see a ladybug or ladybird. Okay. Um, and those are some ladybug eggs. Okay, so you can see that they're really small. Look at the size of a ladybug. We've all seen a ladybug. It's very tiny, so think just how tiny those are. In the middle picture, we have a butterfly egg. Again, you can't really tell how small it is, but imagine how small a ladybug egg is. A butterfly egg will not be that much bigger. And then here we have some praying mantis eggs in this little sack. Um, they actually are all in there and then they will all be hatched from there. All right, stage two, ooh, too far. Stage two, here we go, is the larva stage. And that's when they all look like little worms, basically. And uh, it's kind of gross. But um, Miss Kay got through it and found some pictures for you, even though she still feels like she has bugs all over her. It just gets worse. It just gets worse. All right, so once the eggs hatch, uh, it's still a baby, and it does not look like the adult form of the insect or animal. But in this stage, the larva goes quickly. So what's similar in this stage is that they all kind of look like little worms, which wiggle around and stuff. Yep. Ugh. Uh, so we have butterfly larva in the first picture, okay, and we know what happens. Basically, it becomes a caterpillar, and then it grows into the butterfly. Here we have a moth larva, looks the exact same as the butterfly, and then the last picture is actually a beetle larva. So you can see that all of these creatures do not look anything like their adult form. So they do not look like how they would look in as an adult. So now we are in the pupa stage, and in this stage is basically, the other word would be the chrysalis stage, or the metamorphosis stage. So you remember last week there was that cool video by Uncle Jack about how the, uh, I believe it was the amphibian changes into the metamorphosis phase? Uh, well, we, we know that a lot of invertebrates go through that as well. So basically in this stage, the pupa, uh, which is basically the larva inside um, either a chrysalis or they shed their skin and that this is when they turn into an adult. So this is the stage that comes right before being an adult. So some create a chrysalis um, and emerge so they come out. So for instance a you see here the butterfly pupa and you can see the chrysalis and you can actually see the butterfly inside. Okay. Um, and then others molt or shed their skin. So that means that they kind of like a snake sheds its skin as well, if that makes sense. We will look a little bit closer at this later on in the week. But here are some examples of the stage, and all of these actually have chrysalis. Okay, uh, so you can see there's a, few, a fruit fly in here. You can't really tell, but it's really small. Then we have the butterfly, of course. And then we have a ladybug pupa. Okay, and then the last stage is stage four, which is when they become adults and they can lay eggs on their own. So we have a beautiful butterfly. We have a moth, which has cool eye designs on it. And I feel like it's looking at me. Uh, we have a cute little ladybug and then a beetle as well. So those are the four stages. So remember, it goes egg to larva, to pupa, to adults, okay? And that's it, that's all that I have for you today. Uh, if you wanna know a little bit more before tomorrow, there are some online games for you. There's lots of butterfly life cycle stuff on there. 
um, and other insect life cycles so you can get a head start on your learning. Uh, and tomorrow we are going to learn about two different types of insects and their life cycles. So stay tuned and enjoy the rest of your day.